The Orthodox Jewish community is known mostly you know, by its rules. Everybody's wearing a black hat and a, and a black coat, or you, know, you can't do certain things on the Sabbath. Uh, but they also have a lot of reasoning behind those rules and a lot of thought about how we live our lives. And part of everybody's lives now is the internet. And uh, so I'm at a rally here uh, to, just to talk about the internet. Um, there's 42,000 people gathered here in City Field. And obviously the internet means a lot to me because I'm spending a year without it. And I'm just trying to, trying to understand. And uh, that's, as far as I can tell, what these guys are doing. So we're going to see what I learn. Uh, your internet can get really distracting, you know what I'm saying? You know, we, so that's why, you, you know, we human beings, God created us with different uh, things that we can't always trust ourselves to control ourselves, you know what I'm saying? People, unfortunately, are not, can't trust themselves to control themselves on, on everything in life. So that's why we feel very comfortable with people we trust to watch us and help protect us, serve God the right way so we can do what we got to do while we're here. And we do it together, extra strength. This is about how the technology affects our children okay. and the future of our generations to affect the, to the open world, how the Orthodox community uh, looks at that. Okay. That's what this uh, event is about. I don't do this, I don't work right now. We understand we have our parents and other people, our friends and other this. They do have it and do it, it's supposed to work, and it's hard to work without that. Whoever has it and they need it, it should be correctly for him. And that's why the, the Rabbonum will say it and guide us the real way of that. Uh, he sees what it's doing to him, and... Um, he's talking about me right now. He's fully aware of the advantages. He's a, he's a, he's a certified card-carrying techie, but he also realizes what he's losing out because of the internet and uh, he's kicking the habit for a year and uh, of course he's going to be blogging he's not blogging about it but he's going to be posting uh, on the uh, verge.com website with his exploits and how he's surviving but uh, you know the last I checked Paul Miller is not an Orthodox Jew may not be Jewish at all Paul Miller is right here whoa <laughs> this is unbelievable I would really love to talk to you <laughs> this was not a setup <laughs> that was really really played really well Thank you. I'm not an Orthodox Jew, though. <laughs> what we're looking to do here really is, you know, making a cost-benefit analysis, saying, uh, are social networking sites, are they undermining my sense of human dignity of privacy? Are they pandering to my worst instincts when I get on the comments section of a blog, of a website? Are they turning me into something that I don't realize after I finish furiously typing off my latest furious screed? What, at, at anything and everything. These are basic human values. These are things that a secular humanist should be able to immediately relate to. You know, the bottom line is that we're, we're fully cognizant and we welcome the blessings of technology into our lives, the way that it saves lives, lengthens lives, and makes our lives more convenient. But again, I come back to that theme of cost-benefit analysis. Can you encourage me in any way? You got yourself a library card? Did you not? <laughs> and by the way, I found it fascinating that on the first, uh, the first comment uh, string after, after you announced it, it uh, devolved into a whole long, lengthy discussion of theology. Guys going back and forth, Christians, atheists, et cetera, et cetera. And I found it fascinating how you accomplished something. You got a, a, you got a serious conversation on theology started by people who normally wouldn't come within, wouldn't touch that stuff with a 10-foot pole. I just found, you know, just the unintended effects of what you've done and the courage of what you've done uh, you know, were really fascinating to me. But again, uh, any, yeah, I mean, just stop and smell the flowers. I mean, really just use the opportunity of this year to do the basic human things, to take hold of the basic human joys of life.